Apple has up to three, count them, three new Mac minis coming our way this year, maybe as soon as March 8th. And while they may all look the same, the performance and the price are gonna be wildly different. Here's why. So we already have the silver M1 Mac mini. That's the entry level model that Apple slid back into the lineup in November of 2020, starting at $700. It has four Firestorm performance cores, four IceStorm efficiency cores, eight G13 graphics cores, 16 neural engine cores, H.264 and HEVC media engines, and up to 16 gigabytes of 70 gigabyte per second unified memory. Also, two Thunderbolt and two USB controllers, but that's it. Not a bit or byte or port more, except for the circa 2018 Intel 8th gen Space Gray Mac Mini that Apple's just kept idling at that higher end of the lineup. It has a six core i5 and 512 gigabytes of SSD, starting at $1,100, which, even with an Intel inside space heater feature thrown in for free was just a terrible deal back then, never mind now. So Apple really, really needs to transition that model to the M1 Pro and M1 Mac. The chipsets they introduced last October for the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBooks Pro, but in a desktop and stat, because the M1 Pro has up to eight Firestorm performance cores, two Ice Storm efficiency cores, 16 G13 graphics cores, ProRes media engines, up to 32 gigabytes of 200 gigabyte per second unified memory, also three Thunderbolt and three USB controllers. And the M1 Max, well, it has all of that, but with options for up to 32 graphics cores, double the ProRes engines, and up to 64 gigabytes of memory at a whopping 400 gigabytes per second. And while each individual core is the same as M1, there's just so many massively more of them and other resources that it'll just tear through CPU bound tasks like audio plugins faster, GPU bound tasks like 3D modeling way, way faster. And the media engines are basically, they feel like having a second rendering box off to the side that you can use while still working away on your main Mac. Now, there have been reports of a dual die M1 Max, even a quad die M1 Max as well all for the upcoming Apple Silicon Mac Pro. And that's gotten some Mac mini aficionados just drooling at the idea of a dual M1 Max Mac mini, somehow making its way into the top end of the lineup because it would literally be twice the M1 Max, the M1 Big Max, so to speak, up to 16 performance cores, four efficiency cores, 32 neural engine cores, 64 graphics cores, four ProRes engines, and up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory which I would love, I would all caps love to see, but I don't every time get what I love because in this case, literally, I think Apple would rather just shrink the enclosure than fill up the thermal envelope. So yes, I think mini is gonna top out at max, especially given the reports of that sleeker, slimmer new design, the one that's been making all the rounds, probably as sleek and slim as Apple can go and still allow for full workloads to sustain pretty much indefinitely. For the CPU, no doubt, because they can already do that in the MacBook Pro, but also hopefully, yes, better, faster, stronger, longer for all the compute engines, just all lit up as well. Also with up to four Thunderbolt USB-C ports, which will mean it'll support more displays and MagSafe power. And I'm guessing that'll all come in at $1,000 or more for the M1 Pro Mini, neatly taking the place of the old Intel Space Gray Blast Furnace, and that means something closer to 1900 or more for the M1 Max Mini, at least based on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro starting at $2,000 and the M1 Max MacBook Pro starting at $2,900. And then there's that, not the keyboard only Mac Mini patent that's thirst trapping its way across all the blogs today and which I would 100% completely all shades of Apple II Plus nostalgia adore to see Apple actually make. And if you want a video on what that could mean for the future of the Mac as well, just let me know in the comments. But then there's the next generation entry-level M2 Mac mini, which I get might sound like just too soon, too soon, but the M1 shipped almost 18 months ago. So unless we all want like even Intel to start laughing at Apple's update rate, they absolutely positively need to get moving on their spec bump roadmap. And now, and given Apple's previous AX chipset schedule, was loitering around 18 months for the last long while already, the same pace between M generations just yeah, makes the kind of sense that does. But don't let the numbers fool you because M2 won't compete with M1 Pro. 
let alone M1 Max, no more than the 2019 A13 iPhone competed with the 2020 A12Z iPad Pro. Core for core, M2 will have higher performance and higher efficiency, as well as much better graphics, and my guess is entry-level ProRes engines, but it just won't have anywhere nearly as many of those massively multi-cores, the ones that pro workloads demand, or as much memory or ports. And I've got a whole entire video up already just deep diving into what exactly that all means and why, and I'll link to it in the description right below the like button. But because the M2 Mac Mini is meant for consumers and not pros, some reports say it might have that one more special feature that Apple currently reserves exclusively for consumers. The full-on Skittles taste the rainbow of colors, like the M1 iMac, but an all-in-none instead of an all-in-one. And between you and me, my hope is even with that new M2 chip and multicolor design, Apple keeps it at the same starting $700 price point, but then also keeps the existing silver M1 Mac Mini around dropping it all the way down to $500. That original, just sweeter than sweet spot that Nature and Steve Jobs intended back when the Mac Mini was originally announced. And I know, I know, but a nerd can dream. And just pivot table me out here for a minute. M1 Mac Mini at $500. M2 Mac Mini at $700. M1 Pro Mac Mini at $1,000. And the M1 Max Mac Mini at $1,900. That would be just one hell of a lineup. Just like my new exclusive on Nebula is one hell of a series. It's where I take you through a full on studio tour. Episode one, camera gear, and episode two, mics and sound treatment are already live. And I'm busy right now working on episode three, lighting. And yet, yeah, I'll be doing my set as well. Basically everything all of you have been asking for, basically always, but that would just never work at all on this channel given how YouTube works, but it's just exactly how Nebula was designed to work. A place where I have the absolute luxury of making videos that don't have to be optimized for YouTube, including extended versions of many of my videos that I know the nerdiest, most hardcore of you will totally love, all ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula and bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Richie or click the link below. And right now, today, because you're watching this video, you can get CuriosityStream on sale for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, less than the price of a Mac mini dongle for the whole entire year. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series like The Ark of the Covenant Revealed, which I mistakenly thought was still in the warehouse where Indiana Jones left it, but turns out modern science has just way, way more to say about. It is the best way to support educational creators directly and the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 26% off CuriosityStream, less than 15 bucks a year, and Nebula bundled in for free, just click the button on the screen or go to curiositystream.com slash Richie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for way more on all the Macs Apple has coming our way this year. So just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.